Hey, Facebook friends and my family. How you guys doing? All right, so today I want to do a video on dating. Uh, so this is the introduction or more specifically the psychology or the psyche of a guy. Um, now, let's define the guy is me, of course. This is what I would look like. And so I'm going to explain it in my position and my, my, um, my situation of being single. So it's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction when it comes to talking on behalf of guys. Uh, so, but I still wanted to give you nuggets, if you will, of what I think and how I come to about to think of the process of the introduction uh, when it comes from a single position like I am in into meeting other people. So, so let's go to the board and define certain things, and uh, then we'll talk about we'll talk about uh, the different types of uh, uh, ladies that I will be introducing. All right, so here we go. So, for myself, I'm a 49 gentleman. I own businesses. I'm very educated. I have an ex-wife. I have a house, car, kids. Now, when the things that you see in their dating, the first thing you will see uh, in all things when you when you actually meet someone, that's pretty much really the first thing you're going to notice. If you don't already know them, you're going to know those notice those things. Well, who are you? What do you do? And those things. OK, what do you have? But some of the things that you don't realize about when it comes to the dating is you have to understand what are their goals? their motives, desires, traumas, and baggage. All right, so, so when it comes to dating, uh, in, in the introduction aspect of it, ooh, when it comes to dating in the introduction aspect of it, the idea is real fast, you got to know very quickly what you wanted or need to know. Who am I, what am I doing, and all of those things. Now. Do you think that's the very first thing? No. The very first thing in dating is the look. If I'm looking at you, I'm already stereotyping you. And when I stereotyping you, I'm already perceiving if I want to talk to you or not. So the very first thing you need to understand if you're single and you're meeting someone who's out there and the potential of a guy the position and the presentation of how and who you're presenting yourself to. So let's go to the board and give you a better idea of what I'm referring to. Okay. So person number one, person number two, person number three, person number four. All right. That fast. Which one would you think I would talk to? Right. <laughs> and that's how fast it really can be. I'm seeing someone in the grocery store. I'm walking in the street. I'm at the gas station. I'm somewhere where I just see them just that fast. And then when I see them just that fast, they're going to um, uh, bring my attention and I'm either going to uh, talk to them or not talk to them. So in context. So let's go back then. So if I see her and she's attractive, I might present myself and ask her out and say one and so on and so on. Now, one thing that you need to realize when it comes to a guy position is I have my goals, I have my motive, I have a desire, I have my traumas, and I have my baggage. When I talk to you for the very first time, and this is all guys, they're not talking in the context of the here and now. They're talking to you in the context of their history up until now. Meaning, if I'm sitting in front of you, what is my goal with you? What is my motive with you? Do I have a sexual desire for you? Is my trauma going to interfere with what you're about to say to me and the baggage, like my kids, for example, all of those things play account in the first position of the introduction. 
So I see you, I like what I see, and then I'm coming to you. And then in my mind, I'm thinking or matching what I have in myself and I'm listening to you and I'm hearing you and we're talking. And in that context, that is the first stage or in the psyche, if you will, that's the first stage of the, of the, the meat. Okay, so let's go back to the board and I'll explain it a little bit more. Okay, how you guys doing? Doing? Bam. Nice to see you guys. All right, flip your rock. <clears throat> All right, so if I meet her and I say, all right, give me a number and we're out on the first date. What is the first thing I'm going to know? I'm going to know her age. I'm going to know if she has a child. I'm going to know if she's working, it's college, education. How, was she raised by a mother and father? And what's a good man? She wants a good man to help her. Okay, so in this context, put you back here. In this context, right away, what do you think? She's 34 years old. I'm 49. Is that a matter? No, not really. The guy needs to be, in some cases, older than the woman, not because of security issues, but because of maturity issues. If you met me back in my 20s and 30s, look, I, I wouldn't even be talking about nothing that I'm talking about now. I was so immature. But now that I'm mature enough, I know uh, I can have a decent conversation. Okay. So she's 34. She has a daughter. I have kids, so I'm not going to be prejudiced against that. She's working, and it doesn't matter what her profession is. As long as she's working, that's a pre-qualifier for me. I'm not here to take care of a woman. I got kids myself, um, and I'll explain that in more in detail. So she was raised by the mother and father. That is extremely important, and ladies, please understand how important this is. Because she was raised by a mother and father, I want to explore that a little bit more because the mother will give me some hints on the type of woman uh, you are and, and what you expect out of a relationship. Likewise, a father will give me some hints on the type of husband she will be looking for or not. So in, in context, if she didn't know, if she didn't have a father, how would she know what a husband or a man in her life should be when it comes to situations and circumstances? So that understanding of the parents' dynamics is very, very important when you get to know a person. Those are deeply uh, ingrained hints on the type of person of moving forward. They can only repeat what they know within their history. Okay. A red flag for me is understanding her last understanding of her last statement. She wants a good man to help her. Now, on the outside, you think that would be a given. But in, in, in behind what is being said, it is not a given. She's looking for a guy to take care of her. By nature, by definition, what does that simply mean? She mean, it means she doesn't mind to be, um, uh, you know, a concubine or a trophy girl or things of that nature. As long as I throw money at her, as long as I provide for her, she doesn't mind that. And in that context, she's looking for a good man to take care of her. That doesn't mean she's looking for a partner. She's looking for a man to take care of her. And that's a red flag. If, for a guy like myself, because I'm not looking to take care of no one, especially a grown woman, because I got babies to take care of, and she is not going to be classified as my baby. Uh, maybe another guy, but that's a totally different situation. But when it comes to a guy like me, no, that, that doesn't work. So even though she looks good, even though she's very pretty, even though she's got everything, even though we look good together, even though she has a, a job, and even though I don't mind that she has a kid, and even though she's funny and all of those things, I would not pick her because uh, of what she wants. Her goals, her motives, her desires does not match up to my goals, my motives, my desires. And when it's not a, a compatibility to it, it's a discompatible. And I don't want to be put in the position of having a relationship that is hard. 
the reason relationships is hard is because you're not compatible to each other and you're trying to take a square and a circle and put it together. It doesn't work. So number one option, not there. Let's go to the next one. All right. Hey, boom. So next one here, same thing. Uh, 29 years old. She has no kids. She's working. She's going to school, meaning she's in her master's degree. She was raised by her mother only, and she wants a good man to help her. Okay. Again, let's go back to the idea. When it comes to a guy, ladies, age is not a factor. Uh, if you're younger, older, it, the, the age has no factors into to the situation. The fact that she has no kids is very attractive um, because guys, contrary to your belief, it doesn't matter how old a guy is, he can be 70 years old. I guarantee you he's thinking on a couple of things. One is kids. All right. She is working. Again, it doesn't matter what she does for a job. I don't care if she makes more money or me or not. It doesn't matter. She's going to school and she's working at a master's. It means she's educated. I'm all in for that uh, independent side of it. She's raised by a mother only. That could be an issue. Red flag almost because why? Because how does she know how to work together with a, a husband and a wife position? And in that context, how does she work together? She doesn't know how to. She only knows the mother's position and how the mom worked it out. And so therefore, I have to be aware uh, to that position that when stresses hit the relationship, if there is a relationship, when stresses hit the relationship, then she's going to act independently from me when it when it comes to handling certain situations so i need to know how to uh, talk to her and work with her within that position now in that position the number one thing is trust if there is no trust when stress has hit the relationship she's independent as her mother was and so therefore she will opt to leave you so in that context would i entertain someone like that perhaps Perhaps, um, but probably not <laughs> um, for various different reasons. Last one, she wants a good man to help her also. Again, her main focus is like her mother being independent from the man. And again, I'm not saying the mom wasn't trying to have a boyfriend. But all I'm saying is when stress is hit, she's independent of the man. So therefore, she's moving forward. And when she moves forward, she's moving forward without me. And she's looking for me to help her versus us helping each other. And so her mentality is independent. And as a woman is independent, don't need a man, but wants a man to help you, ladies. That tells a man... You're independent, which is fine, but that means we're not here to, we're not going to help. We're not partners. I'm not helping you. What, what about you helping me? That there's no partnership into that. And so in context, what I'm saying is be mindful when you say what you say to a guy. We all know that a man will help a woman according to his ability. But when you say it to a guy, Man, that is almost the worst thing you can say to a guy who, again, who's trying to work it out in life at the same time. All right, let's go to the third one. Uh, all right, so here is 48 years old, three children, working high school, only raised by a mother, only wants a man to help her. Okay, so in this context... Now, I hate to admit, ladies, there's a lot of you who actually look like that lady. Uh, again, the age is irrelevant to a lot of guys. The child, the children is a factor. She's got three of them. And to know that she has three under her ex-husband is one thing. But to know she has three by two other guys or three by three other guys, that's a totally different situation. She has only a high school. That means she's not an achiever. She's a player. And she's raised by her mother. Only says she's independent from the man. And she's a player. <laughs> and she wants a man to help her. 
the three children that she have more than likely comes from guys who actually helped her and she for lack of better wording she played with them and they there was an exchange okay and uh that's what happened she's single because of the situation now will she attract uh, her unlike the other two that i've shown you will attract more guys than the other two why because she's playing that sexual card she's playing to the to the uh, cave mentality of a man and that is the sexual drive of the man now if you don't know what i'm talking about look at that last video where i talked about pleasing and pleasure so right away i would have been drawn to her through the sexual side of it but immediately my right mind would say she's not quality and because she's not quality i would not actually give her time would i have sex with her depending on the day the time and the hour uh that just that's how that works we're a guy right but what i have uh she will be a type of woman that you hear a guy will sleep with her wake up in the morning and say ah oh, nice no i gotta go uh because she played with the sex but not taking care of herself to be a quality woman of partnership and unfortunately, I hate to say it, but there are a lot more ladies like that than uh, than the other two, at least. So let's go to one more. So uh, it was a busy week. So I go to one more. Let's go talk to her. All right. So here is a 40 year old lady. No children. She's working. She has her master's degree. She was raised by her mother and father, and she's looking for a partner. All right, so here's the truth. Hey, what's going on? Here's the truth. That woman, 44 year olds, no children, master's degree, raised by a mother and father, and is looking for a partner. That type of woman, all guys in any position, uh, would adore. They would adore that type of woman. Now, here is where it gets kind of tricky. I would give her an a honest, open, honest opportunity to get to know her, for her to know me. And, and if our goals are together and she has a master's degree, she's looking for a partner that tells me she has goals. So if our goals, our motives, why are we coming together? She's looking for a partner. I'm looking for a partner. Our desire, meaning what is in our goals, our desire, house, cars, kids, family, okay? Trauma. I have trauma. She has trauma. I'm sure she's 44. She has trauma too. And so therefore we can talk about those and see if we can sympathetic and talk and, and work those trauma. I have baggage. She has no kids. Doesn't mean she doesn't have baggage. She has student debt. She has financial damage uh, baggage. She has family baggage. Mom, dad is older, so we have to consider those things. She would be a good contender on all of those points of views. And unlike the other three, I would actually look at her more seriously. Now, here is where it gets kind of tricky. The image of herself. I may have, I may be in a position of saying, I don't like skinny girls. Uh, I don't like girls with short hair. I, I mean, you see what I'm saying? And she may like me and may say, I don't like guys who have scriggly uh, um, beards. I like clean cut kind of thing. And, and so we're talking about now the external image of the attraction. And as long as we can work those things out, come to an agreement, as long as our goals and our motives come together, as long as our desires for our future and traumas and our baggages, we can work that out. More likely, that type of woman right there, we can establish a, a year, maybe two, maybe three, or possible. You know, there's a lot of possibilities into that. Now, that's the introduction. That's the psyche of the introduction. So when a guy is looking for a date, when he's looking for a woman to consider, I, I put four different types of women out there. So ladies, you can understand if I was a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a guy that you was to see 
and we all kind of sort of think alike, uh, just various different levels, okay? When we, when we look at you, we stereotype you. We then want to know certain things. Some guys are more direct. Other guys, it might take a week or two to ask these questions, but eventually they're going to ask. And when they ask, if it's not a compatibility, and, and I really want you to guys to understand this, when it's not a compatibility, a guy will stay with you as long as he can, but when he finds other opportunities or when he gets tired, he will cheat, leave, or however that looks. But the point is, the objective of the the relationship, the psyche of the introduction is to find a compatibility to goals, motives, desires, traumas, baggage. So let me go back to the board so you can see it, okay? So this is pretty much what I found in all of them. I'm 49, I got a business, I'm educated, I'm ex ex-wife, I have a house, car, two kids, okay, fine. We talked about these things, okay, but my compatibility is my goals. Who am I as a man to who this woman is? What is her goals? What is the motive, desires, traumas, and baggage? If we can figure those things out, if we can compromise uh, without sacrifice, here's the thing. Compromising without sacrifice is the key of a relationship uh, to start the relationship, I should say. If you guys can find a match within those subjects, goals, motive, desires, traumas, and baggage, if you guys can find a match, I promise you, the physical appearance, she's too skinny. She can gain weight if she's too fat. She can lose weight. So the, the image of the exterior part, what we call the body, can be adjusted. Um, so I'm not concerned. Her hair is too short. I like long hair. She can grow her hair out if if she chooses for her personality in my personality is uh, pleasing one another and those things. But the root of the relationship is not the exterior. It is not what the business or the education or the past history or the what. Those are nice to know. There are some certain nuggets that you can drive out of that conversation. But the, the psyche says the root of the, the relationship is based off of Goals, motive, desires, the past traumas and baggage, can you compromise without sacrifice? That is the key. My, my, my pet peeve in personally and what I counsel against is why sacrifice loneliness for chaos just so you can have a relationship? Don't do it. If you're alone, be alone. It's okay to be alone. I'm lonely. Be alone. But I will not sacrifice my aloneness to be in a relationship just to have a relationship when I'm not compatible and I know a square and a circle is trying to come together to be one. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to force it. I'm old enough to know better. So that's that's not going to happen. Now, again, that's just me. That's what I think. That's what I've seen. I hope this gives you an insight or idea of dating the psyche of a dating. So when you present yourself to a guy, be mindful. Stereotype. Are you going to have your breasts out? You're going to pull out a lot of sexual guys, but nothing else. Are you going to look sophisticated, educated as you are, as you should be? If you are, stereotype, you got that covered. Second, know their history. Mom and dad is very important. Because mom and dad, if you got a guy in front of you and you're saying, have, who raised you? Mom, dad? Well, mom and grandma, my dad was there every now and then. Ask yourself, will he know how to be a father? Will he know how to be a husband, a man for the relationship? Uh, if not, then you, you might have to, if everything else works out, goals, motives, and desire, then you might have to take some time to mature him. <laughs> don't be afraid to mature him because he doesn't know from his mother. So guess what? You're the mother. Ma mature him into becoming the man, uh, especially if he's educated, got a job, hardworking, his goals, your goals, motives, your motives, desires, 
and so on. Now, so that's, ladies, that's the guy position. And for you guys who are looking at this, uh, be mindful. Don't fall in the trap of sexuality without understanding their goals. I'm, I'm keep repeating this because this is the trueness of relationships, of the compatibility of how to find someone. When you find someone, the importance of locking that system down is when you find someone who has the same goals, same motives, same desires. Traumas that you can you can deal with, you can compromise without sacrificing, and baggage, can you deal with it without sacrificing? If you can find a person like that, the exterior part, if he's fat, go work out with him. If he's too skinny, go eat with him. If he's, <laughs> but don't change him if he's lazy. You can't change lazy. Uh, you can't change someone who doesn't want to get an education and mature themselves for that. Don't, don't, don't do that. You can't, you can't change someone who doesn't have goals. So change what you can, compromise what you can without sacrificing, find the compatibility. When you find your man who has a good compatibility, goals, motive, desires, dealing with the traumas and baggage without sacrifice, you're in the start of a good relationship. All right, so this is Dr. Bagley. Thank you very much for watching uh, with me um, and spending your quality time. Um, I think I want to do a video on the virus. I mean, there's so much junk out there. I don't think I need to do that. But anyway, so we'll have some more scenarios out there for you guys so you get uh, some better idea. Um, but again, I'm a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a guy's opinion. And I can only use my opinion. And hopefully, it brought some information out. Until next time, have a great day. Sun is out. Even though you can't go to a party or a group, nobody said you can't go to a park and walk. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.